All right, for more on this, let's go to Yemeni analyst Sama Al Hamdani, who joins us live from Washington, D.C. Sama, good to have you back with us. Now, uh, I'm going to get to the talks in just a second, but you heard some of the voices there. Uh, the ceasefire was expected to last seven days, but it fell apart in just two hours. How important is this ceasefire for the ordinary Yemeni? It's very important. We're hoping that this ceasefire would turn into a permanent stop in the war. The ceasefire was actually first delayed from the Saudi coalition's side because the battles were intensifying. The Houthis have took the battles to Al Bayda and Bab al Mandab, and there was intense fighting there. So rather than the ceasefire beginning at 12 midnight, it actually started at 12 p.m. Yemen time, which is 9 a.m. Greenwich time. So looking at that, the Houthis are probably continuing the fighting in Taiz because the battles there are on the ground and they're fighting Yemeni militia forces that are supporting the Arab coalition. Having said that it's really important to put a lot of pressure on the Houthis to stop shooting there and to adhere to the to the ceasefire because clearly Yemenis are suffering. The humanitarian crisis there is really intense at this point to the point that 20 million people in Yemen don't have access to clean water. And so it's really important to kind of stop this fighting and to resolve uh, the humanitarian crisis and to start rebuilding Yemen. The war that has been taking place for the last nine months have really destroyed destroyed Yemen in a way that it would take at least 10 years to rebuild. Uh, coming to the talks in Switzerland, uh, what are your realistic expectations about what can be achieved at these talks? Well, first of all, I'm really happy to know that both sides are still in Geneva talking to each other. The way that the talks have been set up uh, is that each side would talk for, t each representative would talk for 10 minutes. That would be followed with conflict resolution exercises. This is really as far as we've come so far in this war. So it's nice to have both opposing sides sit together in the same room. The Riyadh conference, of course, did not have any Houthi representatives, and the Geneva talk that took place in May fell apart pretty quickly. So this is really promising. And the reason that everybody's pushing for it, again, is the humanitarian crisis and the fact that this war looks like it could turn into a potential Syria scenario that would drag on for a really long time. And so I have to say that the, the UN envoy to Yemen here makes a lot of sense when he says that a political deal is really the only way to move forward. Okay, I mean, like you've said, uh, previous talks have fallen apart. How much of a setback could this mean for the process if nothing significant comes out? So the problem right now is that Yemen's infrastructure is falling apart. The government is not able to operate on the ground. So now the government has returned to the port city of Aden in the south of Yemen, but they have not been able to go back to the capital, Sana'a. So what's happening on the ground in Yemen is that the world has changed. Realities are different now. There is no actual military presence or governmental presence on the ground that would be effective. What's happening in Sana'a is that it's fallen in the hands of the Houthis as well as other major northern cities. You have the city of Taz and other cities witnessing severe uh, battles on the ground, very, very catastrophic. And then you have southern cities that have been liberated from Houthi presence. However, they're falling into the hands of ISIS and Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. So it's really important to kind of come together and look at counterterrorism efforts. Just yesterday, Prince Mohammed bin Salman created an Islamic coalition composed of 35 countries to combat terrorism in the Middle East. And in Yemen, we definitely have Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and ISIL. And now the Houthi militia, if they do not adhere uh, to peace talks or to UN Resolution 2216, could potentially be part of that. All right, Sama Al-Hamdani, thank you for joining us.